Hello and welcome back to How to Be a Terminal Pro. This is Jesse Schall, and in this video, we'll talk about moving files between our local machine and our remote server using Secure Copy, SFTP, and Curl. So we can go ahead and open up the terminal here. I'm just going to ls to show you what we're working with. I have file one through file eight.txt, and I have a deer that we will be moving files to and from. Okay, so the first thing that we can do is secure copy. And the way that secure copy works is just like CP. So you kind of already know how to do it. So you use SCP and then the source. So I'll say file1.txt and then the destination. So I'm going to type in server, which is an SSH alias, or you can type in user at host and then the path. So I know that it's in my remote directory on the server that I want to copy file1.txt to. So I hit enter, and I'm going to open up a new window and go into my server so we can see where these files are going. So just ls, and I see I have file1.txt. So let's do that again, but with file2.txt. Now whenever we ls on the remote, I see I have file2.txt. We can also go the other way around. So I'll touch some file.txt. And for this one, I'll securely copy from the source, which happens to be my remote server, moat slash, what did I name that? Some file.txt to here. So I'm just using a dot for the current directory here. I hit enter and then I ls. I see I have some file.txt, which was not there before. So that's excellent. We can also recursively secure a copy. So we'll just do SCP and then dash R for recursive and then a deer. So everything that's in a deer and I'll send that to the remote server, remote. So I hit enter. So just recursively copy that directory to the remote server. So if I ls a deer, I see I have all the contents there that were in a deer on my local machine. Okay, and the last thing that I want to show you is an example with globbing. So we can securely copy all of the txt files locally to our server and put it in the remote directory. So I hit enter. Now whenever I ls, I should have file 1 through file 8, which I do. So that's excellent. So we'll just clean up everything here and go back over here. So the next thing that I want to show you is SFTP, which might be a better option if you don't know the exact path of the file on the remote machine or you need to be moving around and you're working with a bunch of files. So secure copy is really good if you know those things. But we can engage in an SFTP session here by just typing SFTP and then the name of the server. So you could use user at host, but I'm just going to do server, which is my SSH alias. So SFTP does go through the SSH protocol. That's why I'm able to use this SSH alias here. And we can do some basic commands on the server. So we can print out the working directory. So I see I'm in my Hillary, which is my home directory over on this remote machine here. I can change directory to remote and print out the working directory. So now this is identical and I can list the contents of remote. So I have nothing here because I just deleted everything, right? Okay, so that's on the remote machine, but let's say that we want to do some of these things on the local machine. I just need to append an L to each of these commands. So L stands for local. And the way that I like to think of it and not get confused is locally print out the working directory. So I see I'm in my users JS. I can also locally change directory to a deer. And I can locally list out all of the contents of where I currently am. Okay, so that's pretty cool. I'm going to locally change directory up one level and locally list out the contents again. So I'm back in my home directory and we can see that by locally printing out the working directory. And what I'd like to do is send some files. So we can send files from the local machine to the remote machine by using the command put. So I'll type put file1.txt and I see that it uploaded it to my remote directory. So if I ls, I see I have file1.txt. 
And we can do that again with file2.txt. I can ls here, I have file one and file two. And we can also get something from the remote machine. So let's touch random.txt. And I can get that file using the command get. So I hit random.txt. So if I hit enter and then locally list out the contents, I see I have random.txt. Okay, so that is nice, that's working well. Unfortunately, we can't do a recursive copy. So if I try to put a deer, it's going to give me an error saying it's not a regular file. However, we can make a directory on the server. So I can say make deer. So again, this is on the remote machine, a deer. And then I can change directory to a deer. So if I print out the working directory, I see I'm in a deer. But if I locally print out the working directory, I see I'm in JS. So what I can do is copy all of the files that are in a deer. So I can say put a deer and then everything that's in there to the server. So whenever I hit that and I ls, I see I have a deer and I can list out the contents of a deer and I see I have everything that was in that directory. So that's kind of a workaround for recursively copying, but it's not very efficient. So SFTP is a little bit chunky here, but I think that's expected because you don't know the exact file name and path. So that is just something to note. Okay, we can close an SFTP session by typing exit or quit, and then we're back to the local machine. All right, so the last thing that I wanna show you is getting some files with curl. So curl is pretty cool. It supports a lot of protocols. It supports FTP, HTTP, HTTPS, and a whole bunch of other ones. I highly recommend checking out the man page for curl because you could just do so much with it. But we won't go into that much depth today. So I use curl for scraping web pages, but you can also download files as well through curl. So let's go ahead and grab the contents of a file that I have on my local server. So I just type in 10.0.1.201 slash simple dot HTML. So this is a file that I've already created. If I hit enter, it just says this is a simple HTML file. We can also write that out to a file.html. So I'm just redirecting the output, the standard output from within the terminal to a file.html. And then I can get the contents of a file.html. Okay. And we can also do the same thing, but without redirecting the output by just passing an option to curl. So I'm gonna use dash capital O here. And what this is gonna do is grab the contents of simple.html and then write it out to the same file name. So simple.html. So if I do this, so if I press enter here and then concatenate simple.html, there we go, that works out fine. All right, so the last thing that I wanna show you here with curl is trying to get the contents of a file that doesn't exist. So let's say curl HTTP 10.0.1.201 slash fake.html. This is just an HTML file that does not exist on the server. If I hit enter, it will return this 404 generic page, you know, not found, the requested URL wasn't found. So if I try to write that out, so if I pass it the capital O option, it will actually give me that fake.html file. So if I do cat fake.html, it'll just be that 404 page. But if I'm scraping a bunch of pages and it's going to give me those 404 errors, I really don't want that. So what I can do is pass another option to curl which is the lowercase f. So this is fail silently. So we'll only create this fake.html file if it doesn't exist. So first let's remove fake.html and ls. I see I don't have fake.html here. And then we'll go back to this curl command here. So it's going to grab the contents of fake.html only if it exists. So only if no HTTP response errors are sent. 
So I hit enter. I see that there was output in the terminal. So see how it says curl 22, the requested URL returned error 404. That means that it did not create fake.html. So that's excellent. Uh, you can also use curl with zip files and other things like that. So like I said, you can use curl with a whole bunch of protocols, FT FTP, HTTP, Gopher, Dict, you know, for dictionary, if you want to look up the dictionary entry for a word. Um, so I highly recommend checking out the man pages to see what you can do with that. But that just about wraps it up. So next time we'll talk about writing our own functions and get a very general introduction to bash scripting. So I will see you then.